for those of you who don't know who Ian Dark is, he is, in my opinion, the best boxing commentator that Sky Sports ever had. And Ian Dark was singing David Hayes' praises for the majority of David Hayes' career. He commentated on many David Hay fights. And according to him, as you can see on screen, from his Twitter account, he says that David Hay blocked Paul Dempsey from working his fight on Dave against Arnold Jurgi. You might remember that Paul Dempsey worked David Hay's previous fight against Mark Demory. And according to Ian Dark, Hay blocked Paul Dempsey working the Judge Eye fight because Paul Dempsey asked him awkward questions last time out. And from what I remember, the comments I saw online and what people were saying, most people were very, very complimentary of Paul Dempsey for asking the questions that he should be asking, doing his job, as Ian Dark has said on Twitter. Paul Dempsey, incidentally, in my personal opinion, is the best presenter that Sky Sports, you know, best boxing presenter Sky Sports have ever had. He used to work for Sky Sports doing the boxing back in the 90s. I thought he was a fantastic presenter. When he was presenting and there was Ian Dark commentating, I had literally no complaints about the Sky Boxing team back then. I thought it was great. Today, <laughs> not so much. Well, I want to talk a little bit about some of the antics that David Hay got up to on Saturday night. Other than the farce of a fight and all this, the stuff he said pre-fight, he's also been saying some ridiculous things post-fight. And I don't know if any of you noticed, but during the post-fight interview, which was conducted in the ring with David Hay, he challenged Shannon Briggs to face him face to face in the ring right there and then not in a fight but to confront him now Shannon Briggs was in the crowd at that point and Briggs was trying to get to the ring but he was being blocked by David Hayes security who had given who Hay had given express instructions to not allow Shannon Briggs anywhere near him <laughs> and, and when Briggs didn't get to the ring. David Hay on the microphone said to the crowd, see, he's got all this mouth, but when I challenge him to step to me face to face, where is he? So David Hay deliberately engineered a situation which was designed to try and make Shannon Briggs look as though he was afraid of him. That's David Hay in a nutshell. And then playing to the crowd saying, crowd saying see, you don't want to confront me when you've got your own security stopping him from coming in the ring. What a joke. But that's David Hay in a nutshell. It's always lies and misdirection with this guy. And some people say I'm a hey hater. I'm picking on the guy. I ain't picking on the guy. I'm just being real. This is how he behaves. This is how he's always behaved through the majority of his career. Constant lies and misdirection. You will be hard pressed to find a more dishonest fighter in terms of the way he treats the public at least, um, and, and treats other fighters, you'll be hard-pressed to find a more dishonest fighter than David Hay, certainly in the UK. If you, I mean, in fact, let me just talk about something Hay said after the fight, in the post-fight interview. When one of the journalists asked him about the jab that put Arnold Jurgi down, which looked like a speculative jab, David Hay said, well, that jab would have put down a lot of heavyweights. He actually said that Judge I had a good chin, people. All I can do is shake my head. That's all I can do. <clears throat> this guy has no respect and nothing but sheer contempt for the boxing public. If you look at David Hayes' career from the very beginning, I noticed very early on in, in Hayes' career, from before he won the Cruiserweight title, that this guy was a compulsive liar. He always lies, constantly. I noticed after the Carl Thompson fight, 
Okay, in the interview after the Carl Thompson fight, the presenter said to him, David, you were gassed. You looked like you were tired there. You ran out of steam. David Hay said, I didn't run out of steam. I was slowing the pace down so I could catch Carl Thompson with shots more easily. That's what David Hay said. Go look at the interview. Years later, when people were talking to him about that Carl Thompson fight again, David Hay said, well, I ran out of steam in that fight. I'm in much better condition now. So there's no question about, about it that David Hay lied in the post-fight interview following the Carl Thompson fight. He was lying. Of course he ran out of steam. Everybody could see that he was gassed. He wasn't slowing the pace down so he, so he could catch Carl Thompson more easily. But it's just in Hay's nature to lie like that. He can't help it. He just always has to do it. He's a compulsive liar. You follow Hay's career from then to now. He has done a lot of good things. Don't get it twisted. David Hay is a very talented fighter. And as I've said many times before, I don't begrudge fighters making lots of money. And I always liked the fact that David Hay was independent. Okay, once he left Frank Maloney, for the most part, he's been independent throughout his career and he's been keeping the lion's share of the money. I like that. But what I don't like is David Hay constantly disrespecting the boxing public and selling mutton dressed as lamb being a snake oil salesman. He definitely earned his stripes as a cruiserweight. He had tough fights. He showed heart. David Hayes not a guy who is a coward in the ring. David Hayes got heart. Okay, he showed that. Certainly, you just look at the Mormack fight. He went to Mormack's backyard, fought him in Paris in France, came off the floor to knock Mormack out in a hostile arena. This guy's not a coward in the ring, but outside the ring, he is a slippery, slippery, deceiving snake, <laughs> at least in terms of the, in the world of boxing. When he first moved up, and this is another thing David Hay used to say, he used to say that he was a natural heavyweight, that he used to walk around at 235 pounds. Now, if he was walking around at 200, there's an interview actually with Steve Bunce, I think it was at a time when... Uh, Satanta was still doing boxing in, in the UK. Satanta Sports. And this was when Hay was about to move up to heavyweight and he was looking at a fight with Klitschko. And Steve Barnes asked him, so how much are you weighing, David? Are you really sure you're big enough to fight Klitschko? And Hay said, uh, 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 you could hear him stumbling just for a second. He said, oh, I'm about 235 pound now. Yeah, I'm about two, 235, I would say now. Yeah, 235. So I'm only like 10 pounds lighter than Klitschko naturally. This is what David Hay was saying. I'm not making this up. This guy was going around saying that he's only 10 pound lighter than Klitschko naturally. If he was 235, which I highly doubt, then he was carrying a whole heap of fat. And either way, it's massively disingenuous to say that he's 10 pound lighter than Klitschko naturally. What a joke. When he's lean and strips off all the fat, he's like 20, 30 pounds lighter than Klitschko naturally. Not... 10 pounds. What's this guy talking about? Well, again, second nature for David Hay to lie. He can't help it. Anyway, eventually he, he moved up to heavyweight. He fought a couple guys, Monty Barrett and whatever. And uh, some other guy, a Polish guy, Uli Harrison fought Bonin, Thomas Bonin. He fought that guy. And he eventually was granted a shot at Vitaly Klitschko. And that fight was all set to go ahead. But David Hay pulled out. And I can't remember exactly the excuse he used for pulling out of the fight at that time. It might have been an injury. I can't remember. But shortly afterwards, he signed up to fight Nikolai Valuev. So he bypassed the most difficult champion in the division to take on the weakest champion in the division. Okay, cool. No problem. Get your belt first and then unify against the best in the division, which he eventually tried to do. But there was a pretty much two-year period between when he beat Valoev and when he fought Vladimir Klitschko. And during that two-year period, for those of you who are paying attention, for those of you who are locked in and remember that time, David Hay was constantly saying that Vladimir Klitschko and Vitaly were ducking him. He turned down the Vitaly fight and he's running around saying that Vladimir and Vitaly were ducking him. 
He fought John Ruiz, an ancient John Ruiz. Fair enough, that was his mandatory. He had to. But then he fought his former friend and pretty much high-level journeyman, Audi Harrison, in a pay-per-view. I remember this very clearly. David Hayes said, the reason I chose Audley Harrison as an opponent is because it's what the public want. I get more people asking me to fight Audley Harrison than asking me to fight Klitschko. The public want me to fight Audley more than they want me to fight Klitschko. This is what David Hayes said in the lead up to the Harrison fight. At that time, Audley Harrison had been knocked out by Michael Sprott, beaten by Danny Williams. Beaten by Dominic Gwynn. Beaten by Martin Rogan, a Belfast cab driver. He'd been getting the crap beaten out of him by Michael Sprott in the rematch until he landed one left hand in the 12th and won the fight. David A. fought that guy. Voluntary defense. Then he fought Klitschko. Now, 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 his performance against Klitschko is the performance I expected, but the Harrison thing was a shambles and a debacle. It was a farce. And with the combined uh, Harrison fight and the Klitschko fight, his performance in both, that made Sky Sports turn their back on pay-per-view and to a certain extent turn their back on, on boxing for a while because there was such a massive backlash from the British boxing public following those two fights. David Hay did that. He had a terrible impact. He did a lot of damage to the image of British boxing with those two fights. Now, after that, he did, well, he had that brawl with Derek Chisora. Okay, he turned up at the Chizora Vitali Klitschko post fight press conference and he was angling for a fight with Vitali. He got into the brawl, and some would say that that also tarnished the image of boxing, although that's debatable. Boxing is a violent sport anyway, but, you know, two fighters having a fight outside the ring. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that debate, but he then proceeded to fight Derek Chizora. What he didn't say is, Vitaly Klitschko actually contacted him. This came out after the Chisora fight. Vitaly Klitschko had actually contacted him and said, look, forget about the Chisora fight, I'll fight you. David Hay turned that down and proceeded to fight Derek Chisora. All right, cool. After the Chisora fight, he was out for a little bit and then he was talking about fighting Manuel Char. Now, I might have got the timeline mixed up a little bit here. Either he was offered the Vitaly fight before the Chisora fight or he was offered it about a year later before the Manuel Char fight. It was one of the two, okay? But just st st stick with me here. So he signed up to fight Manuel Char and then what, a week or two after he signed up for that fight, he pulled out with a hand injury. And no sooner had he pulled out with that hand injury, a couple weeks after that, he'd signed to fight Tyson Fury. And we all know what happened in the Fury situation. Pulled out twice against Fury under very strange circumstances. Let's just say that. Then he quote unquote retired and said that he had a injury which would likely mean that he'll never fight again. So what David Hay was saying, the doctor said he's never going to fight again and he'll probably never fight again. Another thing I forgot to say is that David Hay throughout most of his career, was saying that he was going to retire by the age of 30. Once he realized that he weren't going to get the fights he wanted by the age of 30, he extended it to 31. And here we are now in 2016, David Hay is 35 and he's still fighting. So clearly this is not a man of his word, yeah? Anyway, he pulled out of those two Tyson Fury fights. <laughs> and since then he's done nothing but Slag off Tyson Fury. David Hay came out in the press before Fury was going to fight Klitschko, when he'd signed to fight Klitschko. And David Hay said, Fury will never go through with a fight. I'm willing to bet a large amount of money that Tyson Fury won't actually get in the ring with Vladimir Klitschko. <sighs> 
Anyway, <laughs> here's this guy who's supposed to have these career threatening or career ending injuries. Comes back. Okay, announces a comeback. And he says to the public, I'm not going to go out there and fight a bunch of bums and cab drivers. I'm going to earn my shot at a title. I'm going to have to, and I'm going to earn my shot at a title by fighting highly ranked contenders. This is what David Hayes said on several occasions prior to his comeback. And after saying that and after promising the public that, he announces he's fighting Mark Demore. Now, as I said previously, I ain't got a problem with people fighting journeymen. But when you're selling, I mean, <laughs> Demore wasn't necessarily a journeyman, but he was certainly an, a, a fighter, an obscure fighter, a club fighter picked from obscurity who had very little talent. Certainly not on the level of a David Hay, anywhere close. Definitely not a highly ranked contender. I got no problem with anybody fighting those kind of guys. But don't sell it as a big event. Don't sell it as something legitimate. Particularly after you've been saying you're going to fight highly ranked contenders. Because when you sell it as something big, the way David Hayes been doing it, and all these fans who don't normally watch boxing turn up and pay their money to come to the O2 Arena, when they see a farce like that, like David Hayes' past two fights, particularly his last fight against Jurjai, when they see a farce like that, which was hyped up by Hay and all this type of stuff, a lot of them are going to go away thinking, you know what? Boxing is a joke. I don't think I'm going to go watch a boxing match anymore. I think probably all the big fights are fixed because a lot of the boxing fans, casual fans and hardcore fans were looking at the Jurjai fight in particular and saying the fight's fixed. Did you hear how many people were booing when Jurjai went down from the jab? Things like that damage the image of boxing. Yeah, it's not so much about David Hay earned the money. Good for David Hay is earning money. I ain't watching nobody's pockets. Okay? All I'm saying is he's earning all that money. And at the same time, he's actually damaging boxing with what he's doing. Damaging the image of boxing. Turning people away from boxing. You want to fight a journeyman like that? Fight him on an undercard somewhere. But David Hay is so greedy. <laughs> that he will sell mutton dressed as lamb and he will do his own promotion fighting a nobody they say David Hay made a million well if he made a million he could have afforded to actually get a decent opponent a halfway decent opponent but he didn't he's not into that he's into filling his pockets and to hell with the image of boxing I don't care about the image of boxing. I don't care about the fact that this is actually going to turn certain people away from the sport. It's going to make it more difficult for, for it's going to have a knock-on effect for other promoters and, and people are going to look at them and say, no, nah, I went to that David Hay show, it was, it was a joke. Why would I go to this boxing show over here? David Hay's one of the biggest names in, in UK boxing. If he's putting on joke shows, the other promoters must be putting on joke shows as well. This is what a lot of casual fans are going to think now. So, I don't think it's too lofty an idea to think that, you know, <clears throat> fighters and promoters have at least some type of scruples when it comes to putting on fights. There wasn't one decent fight on that David Hayes show on Saturday. The whole thing was a farce. And it was hyped up as something great. Hay was loving it. <laughs> I mean, you see, I was smiling and running around and, you know, getting all the adulation from the crowd and loving it for knocking out some hapless nobody. Yeah, that's my argument, people, that it actually damages boxing. And I'm no psychologist. I did actually study psychologists, uh, psychology, sorry. But. I don't have a psychology degree. I did study it in college, but I don't have a psychology degree. I have to say that. And I've, I've studied psychology ongoing, you know, long after education in, you know, my personal life. And David Hay, in my opinion, in my non-professional opinion, is a narcissist. This is what this guy is. And 
I don't want to go as far as saying he's a psychopath because most people don't even know what a psychopath is. Most psychopaths are not even violent. Okay. Most of you pre people have probably encountered psychopaths in your life and not even realized that that person was actually clinically a psychopath. But I don't want to go as far as saying David is a psychopath, although he has certain psychopathic characteristics in terms of how manipulative and devious he is. David Hay would make a perfect politician, by the way. Perfect for politics. Because those are people who have to lie constantly, all the time. I mean, they don't have to, but they do. You know, it's just part of what goes on in politics. They lie constantly, all the time. Blame other people for things. Point the finger at other people and accuse them of doing things which they themselves are doing. That's typical politics. And that's typical David Hay. So he'd be perfect for politics, even though he actually wants to go into acting. He's been saying that for a while. So, you know, this is not a personal vendetta I have against David Hay. I don't know David Hay personally. Some people, some David Hay fans have said, hey man, you must have some type of personal vendetta against David Hay. I don't. I don't know the guy to have a personal vendetta against him. I'm just speaking from the perspective of a boxing fan. And I think that he... The stuff that David Hay does, a lot of the stuff he's done over the years, has damaged the image of boxing. As I say, Sky literally took a step back from boxing. That's why Frank Warren had to leave Sky. Because Sky were no longer going to concentrate on boxing like that anymore because of what David Hay had done with the Audi Harrison farce and his performance against Klitschko. And those are just minor examples, really, compared to... <coughs> the grand scheme of things of, uh, you know, of what David Hayes done over the course of time. So that's all it is. I'm just looking at it from a boxing fan. It's not a personal grudge. I just think he hurts, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> he hurts the image of boxing a lot of the time. You know, he's an excellent fighter, David Hay. Loads of talent, terrific puncher. There's loads of things I admire about him in the ring, but his behavior leaves a lot to be desired. And I think a lot of people are waking up to that fact. Even people within the boxing industry who used to be big supporters of him, like Ian Dark, who, as I say, in my opinion, was the best commentator that Sky Boxing ever had. Video was a bit longer than I wanted it to be, but I hope I got my point across. I hope you understood it. Drop your comments in the comment section below. It's your boy Hartman, I'm out.